Hello, this is Dr. Jeff Munn with Popper Animal Hospital here. We received an email this morning with a question regarding uh, food recalls. So I was just going to go ahead and show you guys how you can um, search and find if there are any recalls. Let me grab my screen here. Okay, so if you just do a search, you can go to www.fda.gov. You're not going to enter all this stuff here. So if we go back, you can basically just search pet food recalls. I would go to the recalls and withdrawals FDA. And that's going to pull you up to this screen, which is the U.S. Food and Drug. And what you'll find is that you will have in a dated order. And this, this pretty much gives us this last month and 10 days or so. Um, bully sticks have been recalled, uh, a decent number of those. So there are different brands. This is the brand names or multiple brands. So if you're using the bully sticks, you may want to come click and check on that potential salmonella. No, that's supposed to be salmonella. That's a, that's a spelling problem. The one thing that we've noticed over the last month is that salmonella, salmonella, listeria, Salmonella and listeria are, can be some pretty bad bacteria. The other one is this E. coli 0128. That's a really bad guy. I think that was the one that was, uh, no, that was 0157. That was the human contaminant way back if you search Jack in the Box um, up in New York. Major, uh, un they undercooked the meat, and it happened to have a, uh, I think it was OH 0157. I was a really bad guy. Lots of people ended up in the hospital due to that. Put a major bad mark on um, on Jack in the Box for a while. But the other thing that you will notice is uh, is that these recalls, a huge proportion of them, are raw diets, uh, raw, raw. Um, and I know that this True Dog is a topper. That's a raw topper. So if you're using any of these commercially prepared raw things, just be aware they seem to be quite high in the recalls. And most of these recalls are, um, you know, they're voluntary. So what we don't know is if there are incidents out there where, where you do have contamination with some of these bacteria that can cause some pretty serious problems, gastrointestinal diseases, they can pass through the dogs and end up in their stool. They can also be a contaminant for any of the food bowls. So if you have young children around and they like to stick their fingers there or their dogs or the dog is licking the food bowl and it has some of this material in it and then they lick the toddler in the face, you can actually have some pretty significant um, risk factors associated with human exposure to, to these uh, pretty bad bacteria from association that way. Um, technically, it's a, it's a potential zoonotic risk. So just be aware, I'm not here to get into the, does, is raw food better? Is it not? Does it help with you know, teeth and bones and all that kind of stuff? Um, that's, a, that's a discussion that could really set off firestorm. Um, nutritionists at NC State, when I was at a seminar years ago, had recommended that if you happen to be into, you know, you buy into the benefits of the raw diets and you're in that camp, it is more ideal for you to purchase a, um, a piece of meat a, uh, rather than something that's ground together. And if you could even just sear it on both sides so that it's like super, super rare rather than completely raw, a lot of the bacterial contaminants that cause a lot of the problems are on the surface. So even if you're just searing the surface, your risk factors for a lot of these types of things drops tremendously. Um, so hopefully this helps. And if you um, have any questions about recalls, now you can know a good place to go to. We know that there are lots of times that things pop up on social media about, you know, a dog died of ABC and it hits a firestorm because of the ease of getting things out now before all the information's in. So um, certainly if you're using that 
diet that you were talking about. I don't see anything that says that you need to make an immediate change for Taste of the Wild. Um, we'll keep our eyes and ears open for news stories. Usually whenever those things pop up, when we go to our internal here, it's, it's global for veterinarians that practice, nutrition specialists. Um, we have a lot of resources there. And typically, even the, the things that turn out to be untrue or unproven, um, if, if they catch any traction, like through social media or whatnot, we will, it'll pop up in our, in our message board list as, hey, has anyone heard of this? Because they'll get the same emails in their practice that, we're, that we got today. And then we'll be able to figure out, you know, the, the, the true nature of what's going on with, with that. I did do a search and I haven't seen anything pop up as yet, so I wouldn't make any changes in particular for Taste of the Wild, but this also gives you a resource for where to check for recalls. Um, again, be aware of the bully sticks. It may be worth checking into those. I know we have a number of clients who do use those. And if you're doing any of the commercial raw, just kind of be aware of that. If they come in a patty thing, I still think if it were me, if I, which I, I don't, for me, I wouldn't use it anyway. But if I were to like cut it, like it comes in those little packages that look like the sausage containers, the little Jimmy Deans or whatever. Um, if I were to cut that like a sliver of a sausage cake or something, I'd probably at least sear it on both sides because these are the ones that are recalled, but we don't know what's in the ones that aren't. Could they have something in there too? And they're just not, maybe they're not checking for these or they're not doing voluntary recalls. So just be aware and um, you know, be safe. Thanks.